Yeah. Elise Stefanik, Republican Congresswoman of New York, chair of the Republican Conference and member of the Armed Services and Intelligence Committees. Great to have you in focus. The president now, and I don't know if you caught that from Peter Ducey, I got to read this from my notes. The Federal Offshore Wind Implementation Group is where he's going at 3.15 p.m. Are we shocked? We are not shocked, unfortunately, Harris. This is a president, when he was a candidate, he talked about moving towards the Green New Deal, which is out of touch with hardworking Americans. I will tell you, Harris, my constituents, I represent a rural district in upstate New York, the North Country, and a typical commute can be an hour each way. They are getting gutted. Their budgets are hurting so much when it comes to Joe Biden's war on American energy independence. This administration has taken every step possible, which has led to the skyrocketing and doubling the cost of gas to, at the pump. Uh, and this gas tax uh, lift, this is just a Band-Aid. Senator Thune was exactly right. This is not going to solve the problem, which is Joe Biden appeasing the radical left, trying to move away from our natural resources, which, by the way, are cleaner than anywhere else in the world. So we yes. need to unleash American energy independence. The way we do that is we uh, allow leases, allow permits, allow the Keystone XL pipeline. The list goes on. House Republicans are going to run on American energy independence. It's important for people to hear that over and over again, that the, the responsibility and the, the hard work and the ingenuity and the innovation that American energy producers put out. You talked about the, clean, the cleanness of it all. Like, we, we don't say that enough. We're special. We can do this. I want to get to this. Critics ripping the president now for these comments on gas station owners. This was yesterday, Congresswoman. My message is simple to the companies running gas stations and setting those prices at the pump. This is a time of war. Bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you are paying for the product. Do it now. Do it today. Your customers, the American people, they need relief now. However, the vast majority of the nation's gas retailers are mom and pop operations, and according to AAA, many of their profit margins are very tiny, only about two to three pennies a gallon. Congresswoman. That's exactly right, Harris. And yet again, this is the president of the United States passing the buck. Whether it's inflation, whether it's skyrocketing gas prices, whether it's the crime crisis or the border crisis, this is a president who does not want to take responsibility for his abject failures. We have unified far-left Democrat government in Washington, and the American people are suffering, suffering because of their failed policies. So whether it's Joe Biden falsely blaming uh, Vladimir Putin for inflation, blaming oil and gas companies for his energy failures from his administration, the American people can see right through it. And this is why we are seeing historic support. And it's why we just flipped a district in Texas that had been Democrat for nearly 100 years. And we won it uh, with Myra Flores, who's the newest elected Republican member of Congress. So we Republicans are going to continue to focus on energy independence, on reigning in inflation, and holding this administration accountable for their failures. Real quickly, I want to get a little inside insight from you uh, in the House, because we saw Nancy Pelosi didn't exactly embrace the president's gas tax holiday. We saw that also from Chuck Schumer. Look, maybe they're standing on the sidelines for political reasons, or maybe they see exactly what you're talking about, that the 18 cents won't really make a difference as gas goes up and up and up and up. You know, my uh, my position on that is we'll have to see what Speaker Pelosi and Chuck Schumer intend to do. But I think both are seeing that this president, if you look at his abysmal approval ratings, he's at 32 percent, a historic mm -hmm. low. It's going to be a huge, huge political liability for so many of their candidates on the ballot this November. So they're playing politics with this. Harris, they've had an opportunity for the past year and a half to put down legislation, to introduce legislation, to focus on Ameri American energy independence, and they have mm -hmm. failed to do so. They have failed to host hearings on that. They are continuing to pass the buck, but we'll have to see how this plays out. My assessment of Speaker Pelosi is she usually appeases the radical left. All right, and we'll leave it there. Congresswoman Stefanik of New York, thank you very much for being in focus. Thank you, Harris. Wait, I can't let you go.
I can't because there's something else that's coming up and it has to do with the U.S. Supreme Court. So forgive me. Um, we, we did have a ruling come down today which affects your state. And also what affects all of us is trying to protect the conservative Supreme Court justices like Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, the man accused of trying to kill Justice Kavanaugh pleaded not guilty at a court appearance yesterday. And that was just one of the multiple instances of threats following the leaked U.S. Supreme Court draft opinion on Roe versus Wade. We are awaiting the actual decision. Radical pro-abortion group Jane's Revenge claims responsibility for the attacks on pro-life groups and threats, declaring so-called open season on them, allowing, vowing rather, a riot if the court overturns Roe. Let's watch. There is a group that has been distributing flyers called Jane's Revenge that declares there will be a night of rage, looting, burning, um, rioting if Roe is overturned. Violence and destruction of property uh, have no place in our country under, under any circumstance, and the president denounces this action. The White House denounced the group, but so far no action against it. Congresswoman Stefanik. Your response. Well, let's be clear. President Biden, his White House, and Chuck Schumer fueled the flames of these violent attacks. They uh, delayed condemning these attacks. It took multiple days and over a week for this condemnation. Uh, it is absolutely uh, heinous that there are groups targeting pregnancy crisis centers, targeting pro-life groups, uh, violently uh, going after Supreme Court justices, including a, an assassination attempt on Justice Kavanaugh. This president and every elected official needs to be crystal clear that there is no tolerance for any political violence in this country. Uh, and when it comes to the historic Supreme Court case today, Harris, because I am from the state of New York, I yeah. wanted to comment. This is a win for the Constitution. This is a win for law-abiding gun owners. Uh, it's a win for my constituents. And frankly, it's a win for the state of New York. Uh, but it, it is very important that uh, we heard from the Supreme Court that when it comes to Second Amendment rights, these are inalien inalienable natural rights. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not bestowed by government, they are natural rights. So in my district, we are seeing a significant increase in first-time gun purchases because of the skyrocketing crime in New York State. So this is a win. I was proud to help uh, shepherd this case through signing the amicus brief. So I'm pleased with this decision today. Real quickly, Governor Hochul is politically flexing now and saying, you know, New York's going to put up a fight. Well, you're in New York. How, how, where's the fight coming from? What's this going to look like from Hochul? Well, what we've seen from Hochul is she is running as fast as possible to the left. She has embraced the far-left gun control movement. But what I want to point out, Harris, is that when Kathy Hochul served in the House of Representatives, she was at that time a moderate. She was a, a pro-Second Amendment uh, legislator at that time. But now that she is facing a contested Democratic primary, she is going to go as radical as possible. That is out of touch with everyday New Yorkers. In my district, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents support Second Amendment rights. It's an issue that I run on successfully. And I think Kathy Hochul is going to struggle in her reelection this November uh, because of this crime skyrocketing we have seen. People have a right to self-defense. They have constitutional rights for Second Amendment. So we'll have to see how far to the left Kathy Hochul goes. All right. Congresswoman, thank you for letting us get to the rest of what's breaking today and making time. Appreciate it. Thank you.